So this is my previous M1 Max MacBook Pro, and this is my new M4 Max MacBook Pro. This is also a base model M4 Mac Mini, which I wanted to throw into the mix for fun to see how all of the machines stack up. So my previous machine is an M1 Max MacBook Pro, which I bought when they first released in 2021. I've been wanting to upgrade for a while, and it's not for the reason that I think most people will think. Most people usually want to upgrade for the performance upgrades or whatever, but the main reason I wanted to upgrade was because I wanted to upgrade the internal storage on my Mac. Two terabytes for me started being quite limiting because I'm working on large video projects on a regular basis. And I found it more and more annoying having to carry around an external SSD, connect it, disconnect it, eject it, all that sort of stuff. I just didn't want to deal with the faff. Now that we're a few generations ahead of the M1 Max, I felt it was the right time to upgrade. So my new machine is specifically the 14 inch MacBook Pro. I personally just prefer prefer the size of the 14 inch. For me, the this form factor makes a lot more sense rather than having to carry around a big 16 inch. I have it in the space black colorway, which just looks incredible. I think this is easily my favorite color on a MacBook ever. I know the space black has also been around for a while, but I love it every time I see it. It's just very stealthy looking, whilst also still looking premium. I have the M4 Max chip inside this with the 14 core CPU and the 32 core GPU. It has 36 gigabytes of unified memory and an upgraded four terabyte SSD. The price for this machine in particular was $4,199 which is a lot of money, like there's no doubt about it. It's a lot of money for a MacBook. However, for me personally, buying a machine like this is an investment. It's an investment into my own business. It's an investment into my YouTube channel. It's an investment to everything that I do every day because it is the thing that helps me make money. It is the primary source of income for me. Without a machine like this, I wouldn't be able to get my work done. Now, I am of course going to be comparing my M1 Max MacBook Pro against the M4 Max MacBook Pro. And I think a lot of people who are going to be watching this video will also probably be thinking of upgrading from an M1 Max to something like an M4 Max. When it comes to actually what are the differences between the two, other than the chips, there really isn't that much to be honest. There isn't a new design. There isn't anything absolutely game changing. Just a couple of things that are different from the M1 Max. One of the biggest upgrades, and I think is going to be a very big upgrade, especially over the next few years, is Thunderbolt 5. We have now gone from Thunderbolt 4 to Thunderbolt 5. And Thunderbolt 5 can provide up to three times faster speeds compared to Thunderbolt 4, which is massive. It means that we can have much faster external SSDs, external SSDs that are pretty much as fast as the SSDs that are inside these machines. You can also connect other peripherals like eGPUs and other stuff, just making use of that Thunderbolt 5 data stream. It also means that we might see some updates to the Studio Display and the Pro Display XDR. I have a feeling Apple are going to update those two monitors over the next year or two to be more in line with the display on this, going from 60 hertz to 120 hertz. That's been one of the biggest complaints when it comes to those displays. We're limited to 60 hertz. It would be really nice to see 120 hertz. And I really do think now that we have Thunderbolt 5, we should see it coming soon. If you're like me and like to keep your Mac clean and make sure it's running smoothly, there's an all new Clean My Mac that can help with that and automate it. Thanks to them for sponsoring this video. The cleanup function can remove things like system cache, development junk, and other unnecessary files taking up space on your Mac. The mini app feature in particular is pretty awesome. It shows you key info about your Mac, such as how much storage you have, how much of the memory you're using, your CPU load, and any recommendations it might have. There's also the protection feature that can check your Mac for any malware. I use it regularly to ensure my Mac remains threat free. And there's the performance feature that can recommend some tasks to make your Mac run faster. So make sure to check out Clean My Mac. You can try it for seven days for free, link in the description below. Apple have also added the option of nano texture, which costs $150, which I think is actually quite a reasonable price to have a matte nano texture display on a MacBook. I personally didn't opt for that option. I prefer glossy displays and I primarily use my Mac indoors. I'm not really using it outdoors. I'm not using it in bright environments where the nano texture will really come into play. So for $150, it's just not really worth it for me because I will not use it. If you are someone though who uses your Mac on the go, you're in cafes, you're outdoors, you're in different settings where lights and things can affect the, the stuff you see on your display, I really do think 
paying $150 to upgrade to nano texture is actually worth it. When it comes to performance, I know many people like to look at the numbers to compare how much faster the new chips are compared to the other chips. So I have some information here. Whilst I don't have access to all of the previous generations, I don't have like the M2 and the M3. I am going to instead share some screenshots from Max Tech where they spent a lot of time comparing all the generations of the machines very closely, so full credit to them. So if we look at the single core performance and the multi-core performance, we can see that the M4 Max is pretty much double the M1 Max, which is quite significant. Now seeing those numbers is great. It's great knowing that the M4 Max is technically double the speed of the M1 Max. But how does that actually translate into the real world? When it comes to Blender rendering, we can see a huge difference in performance here. We can see that the M1 Max completed the render in one minute 49 but the M4 Max completed it in 24 seconds, which is massive. We can see another huge performance improvement when you're exporting photos in Lightroom. So when you export 542 megapixel images, we can see that the M4 Max is pretty much twice the speed of the M1 Max when it comes to exporting all of those images. The most intensive thing that my machine is going to be doing is video editing, because that is the most intensive thing that I'm doing day to day. Of course, uploading videos to this channel. I don't really do 3D rendering or anything like that. It's just primarily video editing. So these are the render times for a 12 minute video. The video has footage that's been slowed down. It has various color grading layers and effects and other stuff like that. Rendering times for this video, we can see that the M1 Max MacBook Pro did it in three minutes and eight seconds. So that's my previous machine. And then we can see the M4 Max MacBook Pro did it in two minutes, 41 seconds. Now, that isn't a huge difference. That's what, like 20, 30 seconds? Not really much of a difference for a project like this. But this project I feel like is quite simple. I think if I were to add very heavy files like raw files, I were to have ProRes clips, I were to do multicams and things like that, I'd see much more, a much better improvement with the M4 Max. But it did also make me realize that if you are on an M1 Max and you're doing video editing that isn't too complex, it probably still isn't worth upgrading from the M1 Max to the M4 Max. What surprised me most though was the performance on the M4 Mac Mini. It rendered the same video in only double the time which I think is pretty incredible considering it's the base model chip. However, the editing experience on the M4 Mac Mini is not as good as the Max Liner chips naturally. It's just not going to be. When I was editing a video in it, I did have times where there would just be a slight delay when it comes to playing clips. There would be some stuttering when it comes to, especially when it came to sort of adding effects and slowing down footage. Um, that's where I'd see some delays. It's definitely not a deal breaker though. If you're someone who's going to be just making simple videos without crazy effects, without crazy color grading, and the files aren't too heavy, the M4 Mac Mini, the, the base model, really is incredible value. When it comes to battery life, I'm actually the worst person to ask about battery life. Apple do say on the website that the battery life is better, but my MacBook Pro, 90% of the time, is connected to my Pro Display XDR, so it's always charged up pretty much. I actually don't use it much as a laptop. Now, you may be wondering, why don't I go with the Mac Mini or Mac Studio then? And it's because for the 10% of the time where I do need a MacBook, that's when it makes the most sense for me because I sometimes have to go away for work, I sometimes have to go to events, I'm traveling, vacation, whatever. Obviously, I don't want to carry around a Mac Mini and a display with me, that just doesn't make sense. I need a MacBook. And it's why I choose a MacBook over something like that. Because I really do think if I, if I didn't need to work on the go, a Mac Mini or a Mac Studio would be completely fine for me. With this transition to Apple's own chips, it's almost as if they've done too good of a job the first time, which sounds ridiculous, but it's true. The first generation M1 line of chips are so good that for most people using those chips, it's still probably not worth upgrading from something like an M1 Max to an M4 Max. Apple have literally made machines here that are built and designed to last for years. The updates now are much more incremental rather than game changing. This is a good thing though, especially for consumers like us who are buying these machines, using these machines, knowing that you can buy something like this and it's going to last for years, no problem, makes it a great investment. I think the only reason you would desperately need to upgrade from something like an M1 Max to an M4 Max would be for things like heavy 3D and rendering work. That's where the upgrades seem to make the most sense. I have a question for those who have got to the end of the video. Please leave a comment on what Mac you currently have and what you're using it for. I'm really interested to see what machines people are buying and what they're actually using them for day to day. Make sure to check out one of my other videos. I've recently done a unique Mac apps video covering some of my favorite Macs. 
Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe for more.